Welcome to our posts. Today we will see stories of r slash pro revenge. Brother ruined my wedding by proposing so I ruined his proposal. I am, 35-year-old man, have a young brother Todd, 29-year-old, who had a complicated birth and had to stay a month in the ICU and because of that my parents have always doted on him and almost denied him nothing, even if it was to the detriment of my sister Abby, 32-year-old, and I. My brother drinks in on the attention and has on more than one occasion made himself the center of attention at either my, my sister's, or a cousin's special event. Because of this Abby and I have a strained relationship with Todd and our parents. Unfortunately, Todd met and fell in love with Lucy, 24 female, who announced her own pregnancy at the baby shower my mom held for Abby. When I proposed to my wife Michelle, 30 year old, I just wanted to elope, but she really wanted her family to be there so I invited my family out of obligation. While out my best man Jim, 35 male, noticed a receipt from a jewelry store slipped out of Todd's pocket. Jim confronted Todd about this which led to an argument. Jim told me everything and I told Todd that he was no longer going to be a groomsman because I knew he was going to propose at my wedding. Todd cried to our parents and which led to a blowout. In my parents' eyes, since Todd never admitted that he was going to propose to Lucy at my wedding I was unfairly judging him. I refused and brought up Todd's past behavior. My parents couldn't refute this and got Todd to agree to not try anything at my wedding. This wasn't enough to convince me to let him be a groomsman but I warned him that if, as a guest, he'd try anything I would make him regret it. Fast forward to the wedding and surprise surprise Todd walked over to Lucy and proposed to her during Michelle's father-daughter dance and did it in a way so that everyone would notice. Cue my revenge, Jim and I had hired a woman to pretend to be Todd's side piece who cornered Todd and Lucy and claimed that she was pregnant with his baby. Todd denied this, but when she called his phone, I gave her his number and messed with Todd's phone to incriminate him, it didn't look good. Lucy threw the ring back at Todd and left in tears. When Todd saw the smile on my face he knew that it was me and I didn't respond to a single call and text from him or my parents until after the honeymoon. Lucy has thrown Todd's stuff out and has been denying access to their kid. Todd is furious and is demanding that I clear his name. I sent him a text saying that I had no idea what he was talking about as well as a screenshot of a bill for the wedding and gave a vague message demanding reimbursement for half of the wedding costs. Michelle knew the whole time what I was planning and gave me the green light after Todd ruined her moment with her dad, so I felt pretty good but now even Abby thinks I went too far. Next story. Neighbors kept parking in our lot. I froze them out. This happened around 20 years ago. Our family owned two apartment buildings, three units each. We lived in two of them, rented out the other four. There's nothing but these three flats lining both sides of the road for about a mile. Not all have parking. On the side streets are houses and very little street parking. We had more land than most of these units since it was also our home. So we had parking for around 16 cars. Everything was fine for literally decades. Then cars started appearing in our parking lot that were not our tenants. I blocked one in one day. Went outside to see this a-hole drove through our bushes and across the yard to get out. I called the cops, nothing they could do. So I called a tow company and had them put up signs. We'd have to call them to have a car towed, the signs seemed to work. No more random cars. Until New Year's Eve one year. I arrive home and every space is filled. There are even cars on the street blocking in the other cars. I'm beyond pissed. I call the tow company, they can't do anything for a few hours because they are so busy. We're in the Chicago suburbs. It's below zero out. I have an idea. I dig out the lawn sprinklers and hoses. I run one hose inside to the laundry room faucet and turn on the hot water. This way the hose and sprinklers won't ice up. But the cars and ground sure did. Three sprinklers moved every half hour or so. For almost five hours. Every car, every square inch of the parking lot, the street by the cars, encased in ice. I made it a point to spray ice I in the locks, between the window seals and glass. In the grills. Put away the sprinklers and hoses, went to bed. 4 a.m., furious pounding on the doors, doorbells ringing nonstop. We just smiled and called the cops. Waited until they arrived and went outside. Cops were holding back laughter. 
These people were told to park here by their friend who owned an apartment several buildings away. The same idiot who drove over our bushes. I pointed to the tow sign and told the people to move their cars or get towed. In our town cops can ticket on private property with the owner's permission. So all cars were ticketed. They were also towed, since nobody could get in their vehicle. Wish we had it on video. Next story. So I recently had a run-in with UPS. UPS smashed a nearly new MacBook that I sent with them. I asked them nicely to pay me back for it and they arsed about, blaming me, blaming my packaging, saying it was impossible they damaged it etc. I was able to prove my packaging was flawless and get a statement from the Apple shop that I took it to to say it was damaged caused by being dropped slash thrown. I could also prove it worked when I sent it. They weren't interested and messed me about for weeks, sending me from pillar to post, even threatening to make me pay interest on customs charges which I wasn't liable for as the laptop was smashed on arrival and thus worthless at import. I took it to small claims. They hired a lawyer who sent me letters saying they contested it and would go for full fees etc. if I lost. I went for it anyway, I did law stuff university so I knew the basics and I thought my case was pretty clear cut. I won. I won my costs back, plus extra, plus interest. They ignored the court order and did not pay. Now, this laptop was originally being sent to my beloved mother-in-law. She asked me to help her with the problem as UPS were also seriously harassing her for the customs fees. However very unexpectedly, before I could resolve it, she passed away. It was the last thing she ever asked me to do for her. I loved that woman more than pretty much any human on this planet, she was my mother, my best friend and my mentor. Taking down UPS was now my personal vendetta. I researched my options, I could have taken the usual, more conservative, legal routes to reclaim my money. But no. F them. I don't care about the money anymore. I want revenge, I want drama, I want karmic justice. I went to the high court. I got a writ of control. I, of course, added on more fees and more interest. I then hired the most aggressive bailiff firm in London. I trusted that the shitty processes and attitude of UPS to mean they would ignore the letters and actually get a visit. They did. The bailiffs rock up at UPS headquarters and explain the situation. UPS refused to pay so the bailiffs start listing goods. Security try to make them leave the office manager tries to bully them out. Obviously no craps are given by the bailiffs and they crack on with their jobs. I wasn't allowed the body cam footage but they did send me a detailed report. The final conclusion is copied from it below. Calls were then made to the accounts manager who arrived in a hurry. As no payment was forthcoming from them the agent again explained the removal process and costs involved and called the office for approval to begin removals. The agent began to seize assets. The finance director then arrived on the scene. He was not at all happy about the attendance, but ultimately agreed to pay a voluntary payment in full from his personal account in order to stop the removal. I know it's a drop in the ocean to UPS, but I got more than double what I originally asked for to replace the laptop. They would have had to pay even more on top in fees to the bailiffs. I reckon it cost them at least 3x more than the original claim in the end. But mostly I just enjoy the mental image of the flustered finance director and his impotent rage, having to pay his own money to stop the heavies taking desktop computers and fancy pot plants and things out of their swanky head office lobby. Next story. Crappy bosses Fafo. I had a job working warehouse slash delivery for a store. The entire corporate structure was built on treating the people below you like crap, and that was passed down through every level. Managers would just bark orders and be you out for any reason they could think of. They paid about 25 cents over minimum wage, and the bosses drove BMWs and Mercedes. The big boss lived in an $8 million house. Our store was the freight hub for four others in the little chain, so we got to know the drivers from the other store as well as they were always coming to load freight or drop stuff off. One day, we're sitting with two drivers from another store, and Buddy remarks that he and his partner are working over 60 hours a week. I say he must be doing okay with all that overtime pay. He says they're not getting OT, just paid a straight time rate. I ask him if he signed an averaging agreement, he says no. He shows me his pay stub, and there it is. 
His partner comes back and confirms all this, and they've been doing it for months. He'd asked his manager about OT and been told that straight pay was just the way it worked. I tell them that's illegal and urge them to take it to labor relations. They're reluctant to rock the boat, figuring they'll be fired. So I drop it. We never got any overtime. Our warehouse was busy, our store was not. A couple months later, they're in again, and Buddy's partner tells us he and his girlfriend are moving back east, and he's giving his notice. I tell him again to file a complaint, nothing to lose now. So he does. A few weeks go by, and when I come in one day, there are expensive boss cars parked all along the loading dock. My workmate says something big is going down. All the managers have been summoned and are inside with a bunch of people in suits. So we wander upstairs to see what's going on. The company bookkeeper had an office in our store and handled all the payroll. He was a Chinese immigrant, nice guy. The bosses were trying to pin this on him, saying he didn't speak English very well, which was true, and had obviously screwed everything up. Turns out he was a pretty cagey guy. He knew what they'd told him to do was illegal, and was able to produce all the records of him telling them that, and of them telling him to basically just shut up and do it. He hands it all over and quits. I see Buddy, with a new partner, a few weeks later. He's got a pay stub for about 15 paychecks worth of earnings. Company got caught for all the overtime pay and a pretty substantial fine on top of that. Added bonus, the second in command had driven over a nail when he parked his silver BMW on the loading dock and had a flat when he came out of the store. He opened his trunk and called me over and said, change that for me. I told him sorry, that's not my job and if I hurt myself, my compensation claim would be denied. As he went in to call a tow truck, I stood on the loading dock and gazed upon all the havoc I had wrought, and my heart was glad. I hope you guys liked this video if you did make sure like, comment, share and subscribe the channel or posts.